Uh, in this video, we are going to build a convolutional neural network model. And uh, uh, the data that we are working on here is the data from a, Ka a Kaggle challenge for classif classifying uh, the images of dogs and cats. Uh, the data set cat could be fine in Kaggle, but uh, I will put the data. Uh, in the github as well so you can find it there directly there and uh, the training archive contains 25,000 images of dogs and cats and testing contains 12,005 images uh, of dogs and cats so let's import some libraries that are useful and these are more or less what we normally do and uh, for cat from Keros uh, we basically say we need a sequential model because the convolutional neural, ne neural network we have we, are, we have conv, uh, conv2d for our images max pooling 2d uh, we want to flatten it uh, before feeding it to fully connected layer and uh, dense is fully connected here layers and uh, we talked about dropout before in another and, and I'm also getting shuffled because I want to shuffle the data so let's import this okay and now i'm going to define some global variables here okay and that's done and uh, now let's train uh, now let's define two different variables train images and test images and uh, to inform uh, to store the past informational images that we have and then uh, we define a function to read the image at a given file using OpenCV. So a next function that I'm going to have here is prep data image that uh, takes the list of all images in the past and prepare the data in the format needed by a convolutional uh, neural network. Let me do this and then let me call it on the training and uh, testing data uh, to prepare the training this testing data set. So it will take a bit of time. Let's wait. Uh, it's it's doing it on batches of your five thousand, and then after that, I'm going to print print the shape so you can see uh, how the prepared training and test data look like. You can also find uh, this code in GitHub. I will post the link and the description box uh, under this video in YouTube. I'm going also to put the GitHub link uh, in Moodle so you can find all the lectures there. Uh, the codes uh, you showed in all the lectures there. I am planning to add the slides there as well. Uh, of course the slides are majority figures so it's important to listen to the videos uh, not only browse through uh, the uh, slides but since uh, some of you asked for it i'm going to upload them there as well so you can have access to all the material of the course there uh, so so while this is running i'm going to tell you what i'm going to do next so basically i'm going to print the training and testing shape and then i'm going to shuffle the training uh, data set and then I'm going to assign some classes to cats and dogs. And I say cats are class zero and dogs are uh, class one. And then like we did in many other uh, uh, codes that we ran and models that we built, uh, I basically divide my uh, training uh, my, my data set to training and testing. Remember that we have a testing data set, but that is actually is going to be used later. So I'm, I, I need a training and validation. If you remember in the last lecture, 
last lecture I told you that we have three different data set training, t validation, and testing. So I'm going to uh, divide my data set to, uh, by the proportion of 80-20 for training and validation. And, uh, and after that, I'm going to convert the, val uh, the, the test uh, and validation labels to one hot vector representation. And I think we are done here. So let's run these parts. So you see this shape is as we expected. And let me do this. OK. Now let's uh, visualize our data set. I'm going to define a function show images that takes the argument and the index of image and then produce the respective image. So let's see what is the first one. So this is a cat and it is labeled as a cat. Okay. So there is one more thing, and that is to basically normalize our training and validation data set. OK, it is done. And I am also going to import this in earlier subbing here. Of course, you don't necessarily need to do it. But uh, it is possible that after uh, some, uh, some epochs, the training starts going uh, not the way you want, so you want to get to, to get the best model in time. So I'm going to include that as well. And what I'm going to, to do next is to build my convolutional neural network. Uh, and I'm also uh, uh, using an optimizer, SGD. Uh, and as before, this is a sequential model. I am adding one convolution layer. And remember, in the first one, you need to give the input shape, but you don't need to do it in the other layers. Then I'm going to add a max pooling layer. Then again, convolution, max pooling. And I'm adding dropout because it will help the performance of my mother. Again, convolution, max pooling, convolution, max pooling and convolution and i don't do max pooling here anymore but then i flatten the data drop out and i have my uh, fully connected layers here and this is the definite this is my activation function i compile the model and then here is my architecture yeah okay and i am putting my callback functions here to, early, to do early stopping if the training didn't go the way you wanted, all the way to the end. And this is going to take some time. So I'm going to get back to you uh, when it is done. It may take some hours because, well, I actually wanted to put it on 50. I'm going to put it on 50 and get back to you later. OK. Uh, it indeed took some hours for me, and I changed the number of epochs to 50, and the batch size is uh, like before 10. So this is a new copy. But uh, the training stopped after, I mean, it went all went all through to the end. So early stopping was not really needed. And the, uh, the accuracy on the training data set is like 92%, 90% is on uh, the validation data set. This is a pretty decent accuracy uh, with playing more. I mean, running it a couple more times, starting from different points, changing the values here, for example, of learning rate decay and so, uh, so on, we could get and we would get to a higher accuracy. But for now, as the, uh, as we are since practicing here, I think this is a decent uh, accuracy value. I'm going to save this as well, and you're going to get the uh, the model in GitHub as well with the same parameters that I trained here. And uh, as you hear, as you see here, this is like basically a prediction done on our testing data set, and it predicted correctly here. This is a cat. And model prediction zero was cat. So let's see what for the 
101. This is a dog and this is the model prediction is one. So, so far so good. So uh, what I want to do now, uh, I want to see, uh, I, I just have a function to see the prediction of a range of pictures on our test data set. Now let's see how this works. Uh, the model thinks this is a cat. I think it is a dog, I'm not sure, <laughs> to be honest, just from the picture, but uh, if the model made a mistake, I understand that. I think this is a dog, yeah, that's good. I think this is a cat, this is a cat. I think this is a dog, 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 I guess. I think it is correct. Dog, dog, definitely. And this is dog cat, not very good here. Dog, 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 dog. Well, I mean, I, I, I think it was good enough. Uh, so uh, you, you can play with this and try to make it more accurate, add more layers, uh, change the learning parameter, uh, hyperparameters and all these things and see if you can achieve a higher accuracy. That is it for now and see you in the next video.